Raw and Prophetic with your host, Apostle Katrina Garrett. Raw and Prophetic is where we are real, we are anointed, we are women, and we are prophetic. On this podcast, you will be encouraged through the Word of God to step in your purpose-driven assignment from the Lord and to be inspired and encouraged to be all that God has called you to be. So, welcome to our podcast. Here is your host, Apostle Katrina Garrett. Welcome, 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 welcome to Raw and Prophetic, where we are real, we are anointed, we are women, and we are prophetic. God is a mighty God, and I just thank you for tuning in right here. Um, whether you're listening on Spreaker, you might be listening on iHeartRadio, you might be watching live Facebook, YouTube. We just welcome you to Raw and Prophetic. And I'm very excited because we have a very special guest on tonight. And so please like, tag, and share the broadcast. We would greatly appreciate it. If you would like, tag, and share the broadcast, it would be a blessing. If you would like, tag, and remember, share the broadcast. God is so good. We have an awesome prophetess on tonight. And we're going to talk about prayer on tonight. And so we're just so excited that God is moving his spirit like never before. And we just want to just continue on blessing the Lord. Amen. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce her. And then we're going to let the spirit of God have his way because the Lord really wants to do something on tonight. So please, if you got some a cup of coffee, get you some cappuccino or some uh, my favorite white chocolate mocha frappuccino. That's my favorite. Get you some tea, soda. I know I ain't going to say soda because soda bad for you. Some water, some milk, whatever it is, and get you something to drink and um, go ahead on and, and invite somebody because tonight you are in for a treat. God really wants to bless. Amen. So let me first and foremost introduce our uh, guest on the show. Her name is Prophet Sylvia Castillo. She's a member of Holy Outreach for Christ under the leadership for 24 years under the leadership of Pastor Vickers. By leading of the Holy Spirit and the extension of her calling, she is a leading intercessor, intercessor cultivating international ministry. She cultivates God's people to gain intimate personal relationship with Christ. And I can attest to that. She is an intercessor. And she be on Facebook praying. And I know she prays in her closet as well. I call it closet keepers. Mm -hmm. And so welcome, prophetess. Amen. God bless you, Apostle Katrina. Thank you so much for having me. God bless you. Yes, ma'am. So we're going to talk about prayer on tonight. And um, I want to first and foremost ask you, what is the importance of prayer? Tell us what is the importance of having a prayer life? The importance of having a prayer life is it's our way of communing with God. Mm -hmm. um, as the believers and as saints of God, it is the way how we, um, as vessels of honor, um, you know, learn the voice of God. Because mm -hmm. um, God says, my sheep know my voice mm -hmm. and a stranger they will not follow. So having a prayer life, it's vital because it helps us to follow the vision and it helps us to follow the path and plans of, um, to fulfill our purpose in life. Yes. And I agree with that. I agree with that most definitely. Um, and so um, tell us, tell us some of the evidence of one who prays and, 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 and share with us even some testimonies that you experience from um, having a dedicated life of prayer. Um. I would say when um, an individual has an intimate uh, relationship of intercession, um, mm -hmm. our lives will begin to um, be fulfilled. Um, John 16, uh, 
John 15 and chapter verse 16 say, you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you mm -hmm. and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. And that whatsoever you should ask of the father in my name, he may give it to you. So when we um, have a prayer life, mm -hmm. then our lives become fruitful. And so when we become, have a fruitful life, I believe we also, as Jesus in Luke 2 mm -hmm. and 52, it says that he grew in the wisdom. He, you know, he grew in wisdom statue um and honor with god and man so we'll begin to see the evidence of an effective life as the mm -hmm. living epistles mm -hmm. and a testimony is this is that early on in my life and being in ministry um i began to um just really take to intercessors the mothers right yes, yes. Mothers calling on the name of Jesus, having you at the altar, tarrying yes. for the Holy Ghost mothers. Yes. And so that's the type of ministry I'm at. We but still believe in tarrying for the Holy Ghost. And so when I was very young, I just really took to uh, those mothers. I'm very visual. So I just began to watch their lifestyle. And I don't know what it was, but just early on, I was taught to call on the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name. And so as I was a, you know, young um believer you yes. know and then growing in god and that hung guess what happened apostle i be, it just it, it i began to have a hunger and a thirst mm. because the words say they that hunger and thirst amen um they that thirst amen and um hunger and thirst for righteousness they shall be filled so i began to have this thirst i began to just have a, a this deeper desire um to to have a life of prayer and so i began to join in with the intercessors of ministry and really i began to um you know just really see the outpouring of god's love in my life mm -hmm. and that I, I can call on him and he would answer prayer. And I have a son that was diagnosed with severe depression. And so the testimony is that I was able to go boldly before the throne of grace. Amen. And, you know, and ask God for mercy and God restored his life. Amen. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. And you know what? That's awesome. Um, I too had a son, um, I was remember in my early years when I was getting ready to, uh, I was actually, I had just started preaching. I want to say it was around 2009. No, it was long, longer than that. Maybe around 2008. My oldest son was facing 15 to 20 years for prison. Now he did commit a crime, but they put, they pinned on him other crimes that he didn't commit. And I remember distinctively uh, when I was talking to the uh, public defender, cause I couldn't afford a lawyer. He said to me, he said, I did all I can do and the state attorney don't seem to be budging. And they said, if he got, if he takes a trial, he can get more than that. Mm -hmm. But they saying he could, he, they, they're say, offering him a minimum of 15 years. And I said, well, I'm going to have to pray and go get my guy. He said, well, get your guy, do whatever you got to do. He said, because I'm telling you now, there's nothing else I can do. Mm -hmm. At that time, I couldn't afford attorney. So all I knew was to get over on the side of the road and pray. And I remember when I prayed and I said, Lord, send everything you got in heaven to go on behalf of my child. And my, uh, the next, uh, the, the following couple of weeks, uh, my husband went to court because I told my, I, I, they wouldn't even let me off work to even go to court for my son. So my husband went and praise God, they dropped his charges and they dropped his time to 36 months. So prayer, like you said, yeah. prayer will work yes. if you pray for your, I mean, my son was facing some serious time. And, I, and let me say this. I remember after I prayed, I went to uh, the church, the particular church I was going to, somebody stood up and prophesied and said, I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody got a child that's facing some court char charges. And God said, the charges are going to be reduced. Baby, I, my husband said, I flew like a turkey up in the air. <laughs> 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 my husband said, all I know is I seen you just take off. I Ooh. took off running around that church because I knew that the spirit of God yes. had heard my cry. Yes. So woman of God, I, you know, it's so amazing. Um, um, Tell us a, a little bit about yourself and a, about your prayer ministry and what does it consist of? And and do you do you help people 
or train up people to learn how to pray because one of the things that, that the church lacks is prayer. Let's just be real. Amen. The, the Bible says, if my people, Chronicle says, if my people who yes. are called by my name will humble themselves. Now we'll go to a concert, we'll go to we'll go to a fashion show in the church, we'll go to conferences, but when we call prayer meetings, it ain't that many people coming. My goodness. Okay, when we call an intercessory meeting, Ain't that, many, ain't that many people coming. We know because we intercessors. We, we caught those kind of meetings before. And they'll show up for the concert. They'll show up for the food. But when it come down to prayer. So tell us a little bit about how people can get more involved in having prayer and coming to prayer meetings when people uh, host a, 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 a public or a corporate prayer. Yes. Um, you know, how to get involved would be, you know, um, we see in the word of the Lord with Jesus, uh, mm -hmm. John's the disciples, they, you know, the, the apostles or disciples says, as says to Jesus, teach us to pray as John's disciples. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at that in the book of Matthew, we see that Jesus, he demonstrates, it's a demonstration. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and with the demonstration of the Our Father's Prayer, I believe in that time it was intimate and that each of the apostles, if we really read it, I believe that they took something away concerning prayer individually. It meant something, um, you know, it meant something of deepness to them. Mm -hmm. To anchor them in their faith. Because mm -hmm. you would say, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So even to go in prayer, we must all have a level of faith. Yes. So for the apostles to even go forth in demonstration of their gifts, they had to have some level of faith and mm -hmm. belief of the prayer that Jesus taught them. That's good. That's so good. I want to say that when we're called to those intimate times of intercession corporately, it's just our leaders, um, you know, teaching us and the one to train us up in the right path. Mm -hmm. And I think that is 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 it is important um, because the Bible says, "Forget not to assemble yourselves together uh, with the brethren, uh, right? right? Because we gain strength." So when mm -hmm. we come together corporately, Apostle, I believe it's also the spirit of God strengthening us as a unit, as we unify ourselves mm. in prayer. And so this is the deception of the devil to keep us scattered. Yes. Separated. I like that. That's but right. when we come together, the Bible mm. says one will chase 1,000 to fly, two, 10,000. So can you imagine if we come together corporately? Yes, yes, yes. 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 That was powerful what you just said, because like you said, there's power in numbers, even in the book, even in the Bible, when they were building the Tower of Babel, Come on. God came down and said, when them becoming as one, there is nothing that they cannot do. You know, and so God confused their language because at the time it was useful. But God even said when they come together corporately, like you said, there's something about coming together corporately and becoming one making one sound and like you said if we can move our cities we are we as we know all of our cities are in conditions people are suicidal you know people are losing their minds because they cannot cope with the things of life and i will say this it's gonna get worse because the antichrist is coming my god the antichrist is coming and the Bible says that he can't come until until there be a, a, a falling away first. But God still has a remnant. Right. And the remnant is stronger than the, the, the demonic forces and the things that's coming in the world. That's why he said greater is he that's in us. If you even look at the Bible, I remember one time I was I like I like to go on Google Maps and search out. And sometimes I go on Google Maps and pray over regions. And one time I said, where's Israel? I couldn't mm -hmm. find Israel. So I had to zoom in because Israel is like right in between Egypt and the Jordan. That's a little bitty country. And I never really realized how small Israel is. Yeah. And in that area, Israel is one of the most smallest nations in the world. Yet God chose them. So we must understand that even as big as the world is, mm -hmm. 
Mm. If you get a few people, if you get, I mean, it could be thousands of ten, even if it's ten thousands mm. that come together in prayer, we will see some things begin to shake and shift. Amen. Because God wants us to communicate with Him. That's where we receive revelation. That's where we receive. That's where we receive uh, direction. Yes. We receive corp uh, rebuke sometimes, yes. and and all of that. So. What you just said was a powerful statement. Mm -hmm. We need to come together corporately in prayer and stop worrying about who is in charge. Mm. Amen. You know, a lot of times we'll say, well, I ain't going to go because she did it. And some of y'all that's watching and some that might be listening, maybe mm -hmm. the spirit of the Lord called you to head a prayer and you didn't do it. So God raised up somebody else. So now you say, well, I don't want to participate. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, we got to get to a place that we have to set aside our pride and lay down our, our self ambitions and come together corporately and pray. Yes. Just like you said, woman of God, mm -hmm. you know. And um, also, for somebody who is just beginning, maybe for a new believer, somebody, because we want to reach everybody. And I really believe that there are some new believers that will listen to this broadcast. Somebody who might have just got saved. You've been saved maybe a couple of months. So tell this person or this individual that's a new believer, mm -hmm. that's, you know, what are the steps of process they can take to pray? Because I remember when I first got saved, mm -hmm. I wasn't raised in the church. And so when they were talking about prayer, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I didn't know how to pray. So um, over time, I had to learn by reading the word and then watching, you know, sometimes things on video because at the particular church that I went to, they prayed, but they didn't have that, that, that spirit for prayer. You know what I'm saying? They just, it was recital. I'm just going to be real. It was religious. Mm -hmm. It was just religious. Hallelujah. And so, um, so tell somebody who's a believer, or a new yeah. believer, that, you yeah. know, what can they do? What I would say to a new believer is just, you know, be yourself when you pray and try not to be like someone else or want to imitate someone else. Um, you know, it's just it's like the word say Jesus wept, you know, yeah. Jesus wept or, you know, just something start out simple. Don't try to over um, do it, you know, um, don't try to, you know, over exasperate yourself. Um, so, you know, that's what I would say, you know, just keep it minimum and don't try to over empower yourself um, because sometimes early on, I want to say sometimes we can be intimidated or the mm -hmm. enemy would want us to be inferior of someone who already has an established prayer life, mm -hmm. um, a foundation of prayer life that's already mm -hmm. been built up, mm -hmm. as you said, um, you know, someone that knows the word. And so the enemy will play on that with a mm -hmm. young believer. Yes. So that's what I would just say is just, you know, speak from your heart and just let it flow from your heart. And you don't have to have no type of rhythm or sound. It's just talking to God. And amen. be, you know, be themselves and be sincere. Mm. Yes. Amen. Perfect. You perfect. That was perfectly said. Because you know what? Sometimes people do look at others and be intimidated. Sometimes people do try to pray like someone else mm -hmm. instead of just being themselves. And you're right. Be you. Yes. There's no format to prayer. Um, well, I'll say this. In the book of Matthew, Jesus gave you know, the model prayer. So go and and just pray. You know, start off with our Father in heaven. He gave a model prayer, and and you can and you can go by that. And so that's 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 good because, like you said, there's no format, there's no form. Mm -hmm. But I love how you said, just be yourself. Yes. And so um, I am just so grateful and thankful. Um, let me see how much more time we have. Um, put my glasses on again, y'all. I'm sorry. You know, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we still got a few more minutes. We still got a few more minutes. Um, but I, I really, really appreciate you coming and letting and teaching people and showing them, you know, the importance of prayer. And so ha can you share with us, have you ever seen any miracles take place out of some th things that you prayed for besides just with your son coming out of depression and being healed and delivered? Have you yeah. seen that in others? And share with us some of the things you saw of the result of the prayers being manifested. Yes, um, I'm glad that you asked because 
um, one of the ultimate miracles I've seen God do was with my mother. Okay. And so, um, as I stated, I got saved uh, before my mother. And so I remember going to revival one night and the prophet, he called me out where he kind of sort of pointed to me. He said, um, the young lady in the back. And he said, God said, if he could do one thing for you, what would it be? And I said, for God to save my mother. And the prophet said that night, apostle said, God, God, he said, God said that he's going to save your mother. Wow. And we, the whole church, we began to praise God and glorify the Lord. And so it was a period of time. So as I was saved, and like I said, learning prayer, going before God, being faithful to Bible study, Sunday school revival. And that's another thing, Apostle, with prayer is that um, I remained um, faithful and yes. attending service in the house of God. Mm -hmm. I remain faithful unto God in mm -hmm. ser service as a servant. And so um, I remember going to visit my mother. My mother had a substance abuse addiction uh, wow. to the point that my mother lost us as children. Um, wow. Yes. Uh huh. And my mother lost her home. My mother became homeless and so forth, et cetera. And so as time and periods went on, I would go visit my mother. Mm -hmm. I, the hand of the Lord was upon me as a minister and calling me into ministry as a leader. But I began to say, God, I say, I, I know that you're calling me. I say, but I want to reach my mother first. I remembered the words of the prophet, but apostle, I knew it was going to take prayer. I knew mm -hmm. it was going take prayer. Going out to my mother where she lived, showing her love, giving her the word of the Lord, taking her clothing, taking her food, taking wow. my children to go visit her. And so I would just shower her with the love of God. And so I would invite her to church. She would say, no. And I would, she would say, no. And I'm going to be very honest if it's okay to be transparent. Yeah, it's okay to be transparent. Yes. Okay. I mean, in the drug hole. I mean, going into the wilderness for my mother. Yes. So I didn't give up on my mother. And so I began to, you know, encourage her in the word, tell her Jesus love you. And I said, Mom, you can come from this place, you know. And so I just began to just encourage her. But when I, before I would go as I'm driving, she lived like 45 minutes from me at that time. And I remember in my vehicle praying and just trusting God, saying, God, I know today is the day, you know, she's going to come out from this place. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, um, I got married. I got married because I dated my husband for a period, you know, a few we were dating prior to me getting married. So I got saved. My husband came in and we got married, got married. So my mother came to my wedding. And so she's sitting in the house of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord started, you know, and like, this is a whole <laughs> my Holy Spirit started dealing with her. She came and I invited her. She started coming. Guess what? My pastor began to call my mother forth that she was ministered one Sunday. My mother visited and she performed deliverance on my mother and the Lord God set my mother free. Wow. Amen. So wow. today she's the mother of the church, a praying woman of God. And so another miracle, my mother got ill prior to that, prior to this, all this taking place. Um, she was in her home and she had this very beautiful antique chair. She never wanted to get rid of it. Well, it was really old. And one of the nails wound up um, poking her in her arm. And so she waited a day or two. She nursed on that wound on her arm. Unfortunately, her fever went up to 105. And wow. so I, that evening, the Lord laid me to go to my mother's house. My mother sat there on her, you know, in another chair, burning up with fever. And um, it had gotten so high, positive, she kind of was like lethargic a little bit. And I called mm -hmm. 911. They got my mother to the hospital to only to say, that she had waited so long uh, to come to the hospital that they needed to amputate the arm. To wow. amputate the arm. Uh -huh. And so I began to pray wow. and I began to say, the devil is a liar. I began to declare healing over my mother's arm. And I said, my mother need her arm so she can lift them to worship the Lord. Amen. Yeah. And so 
the doctor, I say, no, I'm trusting, believing God that my mother, she will be healed by the stripes of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I was in the hospital praying over my mother arm as a youth minister, a young lady. Mm. And I did the blood of Jesus, amen, the healing power of the Lord Jesus over my mother. The doctor began to do some more testing and x-rays of my mother. And they said, guess what? Because my sister lived in Virginia. My brother lived in Texas at that time. I was the only child she had here in Florida. And so I was mm -hmm. sort of kind of talking to the doctors. And they said, Sylvia, what we're going to do, they opened my mother's arm up. They went in and cleaned the tissue. And today my mother has her arm. Wow. God healed yes. a awesome. of that infection. Amen. That's so that's right. a miracle by the Lord. Yes. When yes. the doctors say they want to amputate it, God said, not so. Not so. <laughs> wow. That right there is powerful. So those of you that are watching and listening, have you, did y'all hear? Ooh. That's why it's so important to pray. Yes. A lot of times we panic. Mm -hmm. Don't panic. Pray before mm -hmm. you panic. Ooh, because the flesh, the flesh sometimes will rise up, you know, similar to my mother. Uh, my mother had a heart attack and and uh, I uh, was got to the got to the hospital, prayed and they put stints in and, and all of that. Um, I prayed for my mother as well to be saved. And she showed up at, to the church on my birthday and gave her life to Christ. And so um, and that came through prayer. And so after my mother had the heart attack, um, they said she had an aneurysm, which is called a triple A. And I know the terminology because I worked in the medical field. And I was like, what? I said, the devil, I said, Lord, no, that you, I said, you ain't fit. I said, my mama going to live. She going to experience the peace and the joy of Christ before she take, before she take it. So that is powerful prayer. I'm telling you, yeah. prayer is, is the key. It is the mm -hmm. essence. Yes to be a child of God. Yeah. And so um, let me look and see how much time we have. It is the essence. And I just love that testimony you shared. Yeah. That is powerful. Your mother, you know, you know why they said that? The reason why they said they was going to amputate her arm mm -hmm. is because the infection had started getting into the bloodstream. Yes. Yes. See, a lot of people don't understand that when the body receives, the, when, when, when infection gets into the bloodstream in certain mm -hmm. parts of your body, if they can't get it all out, it will kill you. So that's the reason why they was going to uh, amputate your mother's arm. Yes. Because the, it was getting the infection. She waited so long till the mm -hmm. infection got in the bloodstream of her arm. But baby, the blood of Jesus. Ooh, woo! Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you start, you, you called on the true blood. That's what you did. Oh, you yeah, called yeah. on the true blood. Ooh. Blood I want to help somebody tonight. And the blood of Jesus saved her arm. When you said, oh, no, he, my mama going to use, she need, you, I like when you said she need both her arms to lift her hands to the Lord. Yes. And so that right there is the power of what prayer does. Yes. You know, yes. I've seen so many people. There are some people who are dealing with grief, mm -hmm. you know, and the grief of lost loved ones. Get in the closet and pray. Yeah. Only the Lord can heal you wow. of such a hurt and a, and a wounded place. And you might feel like, I don't have the energy to pray. I don't have the, I just don't feel like praying because you're grieving. But if you get in a place of prayer, I promise you, you that joy, that peace will come from someplace that you don't know where it come from. Yes. You know, and so. I just, I just love you, prophetess uh, Sylvia. You're such a sweet spirit, and you talk about when you was little, you, you like a little baby now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank how, you. How's your, how's your, how's your, is your, is your son? Thirty-two. Okay, so you about around my age then, because I got thirty. You like a little baby girl. <laughs> Look, that prayer not only is manifestation and manifest manifesting in your family, but it's making you look like you uh, y'all you like a little bitty baby. Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> I'm talking about you look like you in your twenties. Hallelujah, I receive it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise I just God. thank you again. So tell everybody about your ministry and how anybody who's listening to. The, uh, might be listening audibly to the podcast or watching live. 
how can they get in touch with you? And um, so just tell them about your ministry and how they can get in touch. Yes. Um, I'm known as the cultivating coach. Um, the Lord called me seven years ago um, as a coach to mentor, um, to cultivate the lives of his, of his people. Um, so it's just an extension uh, from ministry. Um, I love prayer. And so I love, um, you know, cultivating God's people, one plant, one water, God give the increase. So I love to teach on prayer and I love to help God's people, you know, uh, go deeper into prophetic intercession, um, you know, just understanding how to go into spiritual warfare um, and, you know, in different um, domains of um, dominion of intercession, going deeper is what I like to say, because yes. sometimes you just know the surface of it, you know, um, the surface of it is I woke up this morning, um, Lord God, I'm going out, keep me, my soul to keep, you know, but it's deeper than that, you know. I, yeah. I often want to tell people People that we must be fully armored um, with the word of God. So I love to teach the word of God and how to pray the word of God. I believe that's very important. So how people can connect with me is here on Facebook, also on Cultivating International Ministries page. Um, and so I'm on all platforms, basically, you know, so they can reach out that way as well. And so um, I also come, I don't have a set day. I just come by the leading of the Holy Spirit and come and just, you know, um, pray. Most of the times I'm here like maybe on Monday or Friday um, mornings to pray, but they can look up on my bio on Facebook um, here and, and please follow and join in for prayer. And I just actually did. I also do a lot of prophetic teaching. I have dreams and visions. And so I teach um, interpretation. Okay. And I do a lot of, um, you know, understanding dreams, heavenly encounters. I yes. have a on Amazon. So I love just to teach prayer because um, you have, like you said earlier, when you pray, um, God releases revelation. And so, um, but yes, I'm on Instagram. Also, I'm on YouTube. So they can connect with me on one of those platforms. Okay. Also. Did you say you have a book on Amazon as well? Yes. It's called Heavenly Encounters. Okay. I'm yeah. going to check that out because that sounds awesome. The book. That you have on Amazon, and so um, uh, we're gonna we're gonna uh, check that out the book because that's that right there is a uh, is a blessing, and I want to really um, you know get involved in that. So I'm gonna get with you after the broadcast, yeah. so that we can um, I can actually you know listen to, look look it up and, and uh, share it on my page as well. So we just thank everybody for coming on. Uh, as I, as I said, you guys, I'm still learning this uh, podcast thing. <laughs> and so, <laughs> is my music playing? Yes. Okay, I can't hardly hear it, but praise God. <laughs> is it too loud? No, sounds good. Okay. Beautiful. So, um, I'll thank everybody for coming on and listening to Raw and Prophetic with our special guest, Sylvia Castello. And um, I just thank God for her sharing. And um, tell us one more time the name of that book. I want everybody to hear the name of the book so they can go to Amazon. And I will make sure I will go on Amazon and look it up and share it as well. Yes, it's called Heavenly Encounters. Actually, it's a very short read. I think it's only like five chapters. Um, my five most impactful um, visions and dreams. Okay. Um, so it's kind of like a starter's a, an ebook. Um, so yes, it's there on Amazon. Okay. Um, but look I'm gonna for- get it. I'm gonna get that. Hey, it's short. That's okay. I wrote a short book too, baby. Thirty pages. Mm-hmm. It's a thirty-page book. And you know what? You know what I call those type of books? I call mm-hmm. them power books. Wow. Because in today's time, I ain't gonna tell you no lie. Somebody write a forty-page book, I ain't gonna read the whole book. I'm gonna <laughs> read certain chapters. And that I that, that I need and okay. So uh the Lord led me to write power books, and so that's mm-hmm. a power book. It empowers you to do what you need to do. It don't have to be a long a hundred page book. So yes. praise God for that. Well, again, <laughs> you guys, thank you guys for listening to Raw and Prophetic, where we are real, we are anointed, we are women, and we are prophetic. We thank Prophet Sylvia for being a part of this podcast and this broadcast. Please, guys, again, like, tag, and share this broadcast. And please, um, as she gave information, you can go back and watch the replay. 
to contact her. Please contact her. For those of you that need um, some equipping and being in, in prayer, please contact this woman of God. She will definitely lead you and she'll show you the right way. Amen. So again, we appreciate everybody for coming on and listening. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I told y'all I'm new at this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyway, it's okay. It's I'm okay. Gonna, You're doing great. You're doing I'm great. Gonna, I'm going to officially get off now because I got so, so a few minutes before I can able to load it up onto the onto the other podcast. So Amen. thank you guys for coming on. Y'all be blessed. And remember what I always like to say, be blessed and be made whole. God bless. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah.